Hey everybody, welcome back to the Best Coin News Channel on YouTube. I'm Son of a Silver Stacker. Today's date is May 20, 2024. First things first, if you're new here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We're trying to get to a bazillion subs. Next thing, yep, we're over here at moneymetals.com. And as you can see, things are hopping over there at Money Metals. Wow, copper up two pennies to $5.09 a pound. That's incredible, folks. I really just, um, it's astonishing uh, to see everything play out the way it is right now. I do believe the West has lost some of its pricing power over the precious metals, and I think some of that power has shifted to East Asia, and I will give a little bit of evidence to that argument at the end of this particular uh, episode. Wow, right? This is really interesting, folks. Um, other things happened over the weekend, um, and so I would imagine we're really in some interesting territory as far as pricing precious metals. There's a lot of volatility in the world right now, and um, I think all of us should be paying attention with our ears to the ground for the next couple of weeks. Now, let's get busy with it. Gold is up 27.65 to 24.53.20. Silver up 53 cents to 32.21. Platinum down 4.50 to 10.93.35. And palladium up 11.20 to 10.55. And a nickel. Over here, you're looking at an in-stock American Silver EU whose premium is 8.59, and you'll be paying a total of 40.80 or a quantity of 1 through 39. They'll buy them back for 34.21 each. Now over here to the bullion sales at the United States Mint. Look, they only report about two, maybe three times a week, and that's on, the well, about the 15th of the month, halfway through, and then maybe at the end of the month or at the beginning of the, of the next month. So that's the behavior from the United States Mint. And really, the numbers for May are pretty lean, pretty light, and I would hope to see people, well, doing, well, what they need to do, in my opinion. Now let's keep on keeping on. Here we are at the United States Mint product schedule, and we are looking at May 16th. That already happened four days ago now. Uh, three weeks from there, you're looking at June 6, 2024. And that is the anniversary of D-Day when we knocked out fascism. Regrettably, the United States Mint doesn't have any coins honoring the 80th anniversary of D-Day. That's regrettable. Let's keep on keeping on. All right, here we go. American Eagle 2024, one ounce. Gold uncirculated coin, product limit of 13,000, releases June 6. I tell you, that, doesn't that look really orangey compared to the other gold coins? I don't know what to think about that. It's really weird looking. Um, it is uncirculated, and uh, it does give you one ounce, troy ounce of gold. And the composition is 91.67% gold, 3% silver, balanced copper. And yeah, you're getting over a troy ounce of precious metal. So you get some bonus metal content in there. But if you don't like 22 karat gold, is it 22? No, no, it's not 24, right? If you don't like 22 karat gold, well, then maybe the buffalo is for you. That's the real deal. Now, let's keep on. Whoops. See that? The gold is different color. I don't know why I'm so petty, but that's just it's just weird how that one's. And that's uncirculated as well, so I don't know what's going on. Look at this. Last year's was $3,170 and had a product limit of 10000 So it looks like they've upped the ante by about 3000 here. That's pretty, actually, that's, that's a lot of coins. Um, interestingly enough, and they're, there they are. That's what it's going to look like this year. The clamshell is back. Last year, yeah, not so much. No clamshell, even though you high dig three thousand dollars spendage, right? That's rough. Let's keep on keeping on. June six, and we are at seventy six dollars for an uncirculated American Silver Eagle. That's pretty awesome. And no mintage limit, no product limit, household order limit of ten. Now let's get back to D Day, folks. Yeah, over here at the Royal Mint. Yep, look at this engraved in history. Not sure why it looks like that, but D-Day, 6th of June, 1944. There it is. On 6th June, 1944, the largest amphibious assault in history landed on five Normandy beaches. The date has become engraved in history, and this UK coin commemorates the 80th anniversary of D-Day. And you know what's really interesting? Particularly for us English speakers is Normandy, right? So there was a king named William the Conqueror, I believe was first king of England, and uh, he introduced French to the English language. In fact, um, I would imagine if he hadn't introduced French into the uh, English language, well, we'd probably be speaking low Dutch or some kind of weird Dutch language. I mean, if you think about it, all of our, most of our food, like we don't say we're eating cow, we're eating beef, that's a French word. We say council. So all of our big words uh, for government, uh, arts, all that is from the Norman language. So isn't it interesting? We took, the English came back with their, um, everybody back to Normandy, because uh, Normandy went to England, right? So that, I thought that was always interesting. Now let's shop, shop a landmark date. Honoring the troops. There you go. Look at that. D-Day, 6th June, 1944. Artist David Lawrence pays tribute to the troops with a design that depicts Allied soldiers leaving assault craft and wading ashore. Yep, remember? Uh, it was Operation Overlord, I believe. Keeping the memory alive, released to mark the 80th anniversary of D-Day, a poignant moment as the day's events will soon move beyond living memory. That Yeah, wow. 
that's because everybody's getting old and nobody's going to remember this, right? So we need to, uh, I guess, commemorate um, defeating the fascists, yeah, right? A memorial sovereign as well as gold proof, silver proof, and brilliant uncirculated edition. The range includes an edition of the sovereign struck on the day of the 80th anniversary. Wow, that's kind of cool. A sovereign struck on the, there it is. That's probably the one you want right there. Limited edition of a thousand struck on that day. Come on, if you don't have chicken skin, I don't know what you're doing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, yeah, probably this one's probably going to be an amazing set as well. Eight eighty dollars for eight hundred limited edition, eightieth anniversary D Day collector coin set. Yeah, there's some really cool coins here, and they're all well available. Contact. Yeah, you got to contact somebody that one. But yeah, they're all in stock. You have. Uh, and available to order, that might be the one. Um, but really, the one struck on that day, right? Come on, that's ridiculous. Anyway, let's keep on keeping on. There's a story over here, Numismatic News, I want to share with you, by Richard Gidroyich. No encouragement is needed for gold and silver buying. Mm -hmm. And this is the evidence I wanted to show you about how East Asia is really picking things up. The demand for intrinsically valued and former specie coins isn't coming from collectors alone, but from investors and speculators as well. So, folks, if you are a collector, you have more what? Competition. That's right. So, investors all right, and speculators are now in the game of coin collecting all right, or collecting specie coins. Yeah, that's amazing. So, this is May 15th from Numismatic News. And there it is. Look at that. How beautiful. Mm. Activity and value surrounding gold and silver coins continue to dominate the business of coins. Gold continues to trade in a tight range above $2,300 as this commentary is being written. What? $2,300? Were we now, folks? Yeah, $2,451. That's how quickly things are moving. This was only on May 15th. That was five days ago. Yeah. Are we in the acceleration phase? Uh, <laughs> right? Oh, boy. All right. Let's see here. Um. Let me keep on keeping on. Gold continues to trade in a tight range. Silver may yet hit $30. Yeah, we're there. The demand for intrinsically valued and form, for former specie coins isn't coming from collectors alone. But I just read this. Costco has added fuel to the fire by selling not only gold ingots, but also silver, a form of Canadian four nines fine gold, one ounce maple leaf coins, only to see them sell out quickly. Well, isn't that they're in the business to sell, right? So they're doing a great job over there despite their steep price. Now there is another entity entering the field, stoking the fires of the demand for gold and silver even further. This time, it's the Korea Minting and Security Printing Corporation. Comsco is selling what has been described as fingernail size gold bars weighing between... I love that. That's mm, fractional right there. And it reminds me of what? Where? Where is it? Yeah, that. Nope. That one right there for $99.50 fingernail size gold coins. And and is that the future? I don't know. Maybe these people see, see the future, right? I think they do. All right. According to the South Korean commerce phone app, Pocket CU, the 40-something crowd represents 35.2% of their sales, followed by 15.6% purchased by those in their 50s, with only 6.8% being purchased by people in their 20s. The World Gold Council, that's the WGC, recently reported South Korean demand for coins and bars was up 27% from a year earlier. There you go. At about the same time, the U.S. Mint released its 2024 West Point Proof American Gold Eagles, noting these coins, along with the three nines fine silver A, uh, silver James A. Garfield presidential medal, are the mint's top sellers. So there you go. They're trying to say that gold and silver are the top dogs. Is the madness just getting started, as was recently asked by Forbes magazine? Is there what the WGC calls blistering central bank buying? China? Is Well, it's difficult to get a handle on hobby investors, central bank, and general public purchasing figures in the United States, but people don't appear to need any encouragement to continue buying gold and silver coins. That's it right there. The writing's on the wall, folks. It really is. What are you going to do? I don't know. It's up to you. Due diligence is what I would say. Now, this is the plus one for Psalm 41.5. As for me, when I was sick, I said, oh, Lord, show me favor. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. And I think what that means is that not only... Should we pray for our spiritual shortcomings be cured, not just our physical? Wait, we start over. Come on. We should pray that our spiritual shortcomings be cured, not just our physical symptoms. There it is. Yeah. Heal my soul. And now this is 99.9 KOIN Coin News Radio, a flock of seagulls, Space Age love song. Hmm. Love that band. I'm a new wave kid. That's it. No doubt about it. Punk rock, new wave, you name it. I got it. And hopefully, I'm rubbing off on you.
Now, with that said, I want to thank you all for coming. Thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you do like what you hear and see, sub the channel. It is free. However, membership is not. It's $1.99 a month, but it is totally worthy. And then we opened up the Stacker store to check it out. Bam, we got t-shirts, we got hoodies, stickers, and mugs. Pretty awesome, if you ask me. Thanks, folks. Y'all have a wonderful day. Hopefully, you'll come to the uh, stream this morning at 11.30 a.m. See you then. Stack around.